Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to a new video. So in this one then, I'm gonna show you how to pick a winning niche that has huge potential in 2019. Um, I've got a three point checklist for you to follow that can pretty much guarantee that you've chosen a good niche. And I've also got three awesome niche ideas at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to see what those are. Before we jump into it though, I just wanna very quickly mention, as always, I am gonna wait a free one-to-one -one call with me. So a chance for me and you then to have a chat Chat, you can ask my help in whatever way you need it, whether it's a store review, picking Facebook interests, looking at certain products, whatever it is. If that's something that you want the chance to win, all you simply have to do then is like the video and leave a comment down below. If you commented on yesterday's video, just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with all that being said then guys, let's jump straight into this. So to start the video off then, I wanna give you guys kind of like the main three advantages of actually picking a niche um, versus just selling products from a variety of different niches. So number one being the branding opportunities. Obviously, if you pick one specific niche and you brand all of your products, all of your marketing content, your logo, the name of your store, etc., people get to know you for what you sell. So for example, if you go into the shaving niche and you sell shaving products, etc., whenever that one specific person has a requirement for a shaving product, then they know to come back to you, which is customer retention. So um, basically like the percentage rate in which customers will come back and shop again. Number two is the upsells and cross sales. Obviously, if you're selling within one specific niche, then there's a reason that person is on your store and it's because they're interested in the range of products. So when it comes to getting them to spend that little bit more, then it's a lot easier to do so because all the products are related. Number three is obviously the marketing. When it comes to the Facebook pixel, if you've only got one type of audience coming onto your store, you don't have to worry about the data being skewed. You don't have to worry about setting up custom conversions that can sometimes get a bit confusing. Um, and the Second point is obviously no email segment. So for example, if you have a niche store and you gather 100 emails, then those 100 emails are gonna be related to the products you're selling. Whereas if you have a general store and you gather 100 emails, you might have 40 of those emails for dog products, 40 of those emails for cat products, and 20 of those emails for, um, I don't know, let's say stationary products. So they're kind of like the main three advantages then to actually pick in one specific niche. So before we jump into how to actually pick your niche, just a quick recommendation, and that is that I recommend choosing a niche that you have a personal interest and knowledge of, because it, that'll become a lot easier to pick products and come up with insider interests. So for example, then myself, I like golf, I play golf, I have friends that are interested and play golf also. So when I see a product in the golf niche, I'll know straight away, um, whether that will be a good product or not, whether it'll be marketable because I have an interest in golf and I know what golfers are interested in. If I'm not interested in it myself, then the chances are other golfers won't be either. Also, when it comes to marketing and coming up with insider interests, then what I teach is picking interests that are related to the people who are super passionate about your niche. So for example, then again, going back to the golf example, um, if I was to say to you, Tiger Woods, everybody watching this video has probably heard of Tiger Woods because he's one of the most famous people in the world and he plays golf. So if you were to target him as an interest on Facebook, then the chances are I would be including people like you who might not necessarily play golf but still know who he is. If I was to say a golfer like, um, let me just go for Luke Donald, then unless you play golf, then you probably don't know who he is. So therefore, you won't be included in the interest when I target it. And I'll only be targeting those people who have that solid knowledge and that deep interest and passion in golf. And therefore, I'll have a higher hit rate with my ads. So that's my recommendation. And just a quick one, I always recommend, especially if you're going into this in the long term, is choosing a niche that you yourself have a knowledge and interest in. So when it comes to picking a niche, then here are kind of like the five ways in which I go about doing it. And then we're gonna go into the three point checklist. So number one then is it must, must, must be targetable on Facebook or Instagram, however you decide to market your product, purely because the broader a niche is, the less targetable it is, and therefore it requires more money to spend on ads. For example, if I was to sell a golf product, there's a specific audience, I can have a high quality audience, quite a high hit rate, therefore I won't have to spend much money to start bringing the sales in. Whereas if I was to sell let's say for example some sort of light bulb is quite a general product is pretty much applicable to everybody therefore you can't really target specific people with it like the, I haven't checked but there's probably not pages 
Um, you probably can't target light bulb as an interest because people aren't interested in light bulbs, or at least I've never met anybody who is. Therefore, I would have to target quite broad interests, quite broad audiences, and I might have to spend even more money before I start to see the results and the sales come in um, and before my ads actually start to optimize. So the more specific you can be then with the audience that you're targeting, the better. Number two then, trending niches are by far the easiest as they're already proven and they're in season. So the easiest, easiest, easiest way to do this is simply go into Google Trends. Um, let's get rid of climbing, it's not a great example right now. And if we go for, um, let's go. So the festival was in London recently, so the LGBT festival. So if we were to just search this, we can see that the popularity of this as an interest is increasing specifically and it's on an upward trend therefore it's becoming more popular the audience is very evergreen and what that means is that there's more and more people coming into this audience as an interest and therefore there's more and more demand for products within that certain niche a good way to come up with trended niche ideas then is think about the time of year in the country that you want to sell in so for example then in the uk we're kind of like in the middle of summer at the moment it's really warm outside so what do people start doing once it's warm outside they um, they start exercising and running more they might get on their bikes so perhaps there's certain cycling products they spend more time in their garden so could you look at drop shipping say high ticket items like garden furniture or what kind of garden tools or garden gadgets can you sell um, what happens to pets in the summer they get really hot so is there certain products that can help keep dogs cooler um, these are just all the kind of different ways of thinking so always be thinking trending because then you know there's a proven demand for products within a certain space number three then is sub niches and these work best as they target a specific audience and the more specific the better because so for example then the best way to kind of explain this is to give you an example um, if you're in the dog niche then and you sell a just a generalized dog product then of course everybody's going to be everybody who has a dog is going to be interested in your product but it isn't going to be specific to one type of person therefore the amount of interest won't be as high as if it was so for example then my myself owning a dog if i was to see um let's just say a normal dog bowl then it's a dog bowl yes i'm interested in it but it doesn't really strike my interest that much because I mean, it's just a dog bowl. Whereas if it was a dog bowl with a German Shepherd on it, because I own and have a German Shepherd, then my interest is gonna be a lot higher and therefore I'm a lot more likely to actually buy that product. So hopefully that kind of example explains the importance of actually choosing a sub niche. Um, and just to kind of explain this further, this is why I put point four in here, which is go for specific popular products in your niche. And the best way to do this then is to use the Google Keyword Planner. So to give you an example, using the dog bowl and um, I've put dog bowl in here and Google's going to give me kind of like all the related search terms and their monthly search volumes and just to give you an example then of how powerful this can be so you can see I've just put dog bowl in here we can see the average monthly searches which is 10k to 100k whereas if we were to just scroll down here we'll look for something similar so elevated dog bowl so that is like a sub niche within a sub niche so you have dogs dog bowls is the sub niche and then you have elevated dog bowls which is a sub niche and as as you can see the monthly searches is still quite high so there's a really specific passionate audience that are looking for these elevated dog bowls so if you can target and find those on Facebook then you're going to be onto a winner me being in a dog niche having a big dog I know the reason behind these products hence why I know how important they are and hence why I know why certain people are so interested in them just to scroll down as well give you another example we've got the slow feeder dog bowl again being within the dog niche people with certain dog breeds are absolutely huge on these slow feeder dog bowls because there's a health benefit behind them so again that's kind of like another way in which you could market the product in the fact that it is a healthy alternative to just a normal dog bowl moving on down and just to give you another example then we have the puppy bowl so as you can see like a dog bowl is a dog bowl whether you've got a puppy or a dog but for whatever reason people are searching for a puppy bowl therefore there's a specific sub niche within your niche there and a way that you can brand and market a certain product you can market it being that this isn't just a normal dog bowl it's a dog bowl specific for puppies being in a dog niche i know that it's a I think it's about 1.6 million dogs are adopted every single year just in the uk so there's a huge 
huge, huge, huge new market, um, a new customer range coming into the market every single year. So something like this, again, if done correctly, um, could be very um, profitable. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you found a product that you want to sell, or maybe you're even selling a product that isn't going so well, then come over to the Google Keyword Planner, put your product in there, and then see if there's a sub niche within that niche that you're already selling in. Because if you get it right, then trust me, you can make a lot of money. The Keyword Planner as well for me is only something I've been using quite a lot this year. And trust me, it's completely changed the product research game for me. Um, so anyway, that just about covers one through four. Number five is use the I love strategy on Facebook. This is so simple yet so effective. And the reason being then is that passion is king because Going back to the example I said about if I saw a German Shepherd dog bowl, because I earn a German Shepherd, I'm going to be passionate and more interested in it. So the more specific and more passionate audience you can find, then the trust me, it's just going to be so much easier to sell products to people who are passionate about them rather than people who just have a general interest in them. Trust me, it will make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So just to give you an example, then simply go into Facebook, just put I love. Um, let's go back to the top. Make sure you choose pages, of course, because this is going to be the people who follow these pages. And obviously, if a page has loads of loads of um, likes, then obviously that's a good symbol and representation of how many people are actually passionate about that subject. So as simple as it is, just scroll through until you see a niche that just kind of like springs to mind. So family. So is there an opportunity within, say, creating certain POD designs around families? Um, obviously, Manchester is quite specific. We've got dogs, Blackpool, um, again, dogs climbing again, which is a really, really good niche. In my opinion, it's not one that you hear any dropships talk about. And there's a huge market um, and audience for climbing. Where else? We've got dogs, wolves. So rather than just being within the dog niche, could you sell certain wolf products? Um, what do we have? I love God. So is there certain, again, certain products, maybe it's jewelry you could sell within the God niche. Um, let's just keep going a couple more. I would stay away from holidays like this or occasions that are just one day with drop shipping and delivery times. It can be difficult. Um, so we've got cats and then let's just go with a couple more. I've had dogs, I've had cats. Um, skydiving so is there maybe some sort of POD designs again for people who are passionate about um, skydiving and then we have jewelry as well I'm not going to bore you by going through every single one so with that being said then they're kind of like the five ways I go about finding niche and kind of coming up with the evidence of whether it's going to be a good niche or not but just to kind of give you the three-point checklist then if you can if you pick a niche and then ask yourself these questions about this niche and if it's yes to every single question then you know for a fact that you've chosen a good niche number one then is the niche on an upward trend obviously if the graph is going upwards there's more and more people coming into the market there's more and more demand therefore it's going to be a whole lot easier to sell those products if it's on a downward trend then obviously there's going to be less and less people look looking for those type of products so if it's on an upward trend then great is it targetable on Facebook or Instagram, depending on which route you want to take? If it is, then great. Obviously, it's going to be a whole lot easier to sell the products that you can target an audience with. Um, and then thirdly, is it a passionate audience? If you can find an audience that's passionate about your product, trust me, it will become so, so much easier. So if you answered yes to all three questions, then you've got a good niche on your hands. And with that being said, then to finish the video off, um, here's three niche ideas. And I just want to take you through these and why I believe them to be such good ones. Number one is the climbing niche. I've already shown it before in the video purely because if I show you it in Google Trends, it's not quite, or I think it kind of is at the moment climbing worldwide is kind of creeping its way back up now but as you can see it's pretty solid so there's like a consistent demand for climbing products um, and in my opinion some sort of I don't know maybe some jewelry or POD designs it's not a niche that you hear many people talking about therefore I don't think the competition is going to be very high mm -hmm. number two then is the geek niche I think within the POD kind of area then you could absolutely kill it with certain designs because there's so many different kind of like sayings and catchphrases that people can't trademark and you can build designs around them um, or you can simply just get them printed on t-shirts that I think will work really well and then thirdly is gaming and now you might be thinking that gaming is really popular um, but as it says there in brackets ROW which stands for rest of world and just to kind of illustrate like, how powerful this is we can see that gaming is getting more and more popular as time goes on which is get which again is good because it's on an upward trend um, but look at the interest so many people when they think of gaming they might think UK or US um, but if you just look at the interest by reading 
region the uk and us aren't even in the top five so there's huge 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 scope there um, to expand into these countries and with that being said then guys i'm gonna cut the video there um, i've been talking for 15 minutes now and i don't want to make these videos too long but any questions at all on any of this feel free to leave a comment down below i always get back to every single question um, and of course if you're still watching thank you very much um, i really do appreciate it um, if you enjoyed the video please do make sure you leave a like and of course if you want to enter for that chance to win a one-to-one -one call please make sure you leave a comment below as well and with that being said then let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video so this is previous video then um, it's kind of like part two of how i scaled a brand new store to over a thousand pound a day so if you haven't seen it yet please do go make sure you check it out um, but anyway let's get into announcing the winner so i'm just going to take the url head over to the random comment picker 35 unique comments which is absolutely awesome so thank you very much to everybody who commented and the winner then of the previous video is mac so thank you very much for your comment make sure you reach out on instagram we can get that call arranged and guys if you just want to get straight down to business and book a call right away you can actually do so make sure you check out the link in the video description below and with that being said then guys thanks again for tuning in i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one